the way we're gonna get started with all this is I'm gonna show you what we're building, okay? So let me start by pulling up the uh, halfway finished version of what we're making. It's a pretty straightforward app. We're essentially creating an app where I can create different timers, okay? So maybe this one is work, this one's home, this one's school, and when I click on one of them, the timer begins. You'll notice that right here on our dashboard, uh, we're seeing the timer start. This pie chart's not completely finished. I just kind of started working on the bare bones of this. Um, so that way we at least know, you know, the direction we're going and we'll kind of just go from there. So you'll see that if I click on here, it stops. If I click on a different one, it starts increasing that other timer, etc. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So you're going to start by creating a new project. We're going to create a new Mac OS and it'll be, uh, an app. We'll say next and I'm going to name my project. I'll call it live tutorial and we'll call this uh, hours tracking, okay? Or time tracking, we'll call it time tracking. So this might be good for someone who maybe is like a freelancer and you're trying to figure out uh, essentially how to parse up your time or how much time you spent on different things. Live tutorial underscore, I'll call this time tracking. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and create my project and uh, every project these days uh, comes with some extra gunk that we don't necessarily want to use anymore. So I'm not going to keep the majority of this junk. I'm going to get rid of a lot of this. That would be right here. I'm going to get rid of this fetch request. I'm going to get rid of uh, these functions. I don't need these functions. Okay. And I also don't need this formatter. Let's get rid of that. And I really just want the meat. So I'm gonna get even get rid of a lot of the stuff in here because this is not really relevant to what we're building today. Uh, let's put text and we'll say, hello. Okay, so let's see what we're gonna do next. So now if we just go ahead and say save and we run it, so let's run it. Of course, we're building this in Swift UI 2.0. That's kind of why uh, you'll see some of the file structures are what they are. But you'll see what we just created. Get rid of that. Uh, essentially, oh, it's simply put, it's right here. It's this little thing. It's nothing, right? So that's that's this. You'll see that it's just the word hello. Okay, so let's go ahead and first fix that up. So I'm going to start by showing you guys what I did for the sample version. So in a, it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to use Geometry Reader to assess how much space I could theoretically have for my app. And I'm gonna do some copy pasting of code, uh, primarily because I took some time to build some of this in advance. So I'm going to start by creating uh, Geometry Reader in here, okay? And you'll see that it has a closure inside and I'll reference the Geometry Reader with the word geometry. And inside of that, I'm just going to put the word, or the, our text saying, hello, okay? And let's run that, let's see what we get. I don't want this canvas, we're not going to really use canvases today, for the most part at least. Sure enough, now we have something that can scale up and it can increase in size a little bit. We still have hello in the top left corner here. Okay, and that's because Geometry Reader actually tosses things in the top left corner. So we have hello, and we're going to add some other pieces to it now. What I want to create essentially inside of here so far is I'm gonna create, it's called an H split view, okay? And inside of this H split view, I'm gonna have two separate things. I'm gonna have, uh, let's get rid of this E. So first I'm gonna have a V stack, okay? And inside of this V stack, I'm going to put just a text, okay? And the other thing I'm gonna put next to it is probably just another view. Let's just call it another view stack for now, okay? And inside of that, I'll put text that says B, okay? And the only thing I really need to do for now is to say that this second V stack is going to have, I want to give it a height that is equal to the, the height of the geometry reader. So I'm gonna say height, and we'll say, I'm gonna actually expand this. We're zooming in a little bit here. And we'll reference the geometry reader, geometry dot size dot height. Of course, it's not doing autocomplete because of frame, a frame. There we go. 
And for this other one here, for A, we're going to have, I'm gonna give it a really random background color so you know how big everything is, okay? So I'm gonna say it's gonna be a color dot red. And for now, I might as well just give this one dot background. And it'll be color dot blue. Okay, and in addition, I'm gonna give this a finite width to dot frame. It's gonna be width of 300. And geometry, it's and sorry, it's width 300 and height, and that height will be of geometry dot size dot height. Okay, let's go ahead and save it and run it and see what we get. Okay, now we have something a little more substantial. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand this all the way out, like so. And that way, every time we work, we'll have it fully expanded. Maybe the one exception is I might, might go here and just decrease its height a little bit in case we want to read the console when we start doing things. So now we uh, started setting up our, our basic view, okay? And what I want to put inside of this VStack. So inside of this VStack, instead of putting this, uh, this text, I'm going to put a spacer to shove everything. First, I'm going to put a list on top. and Let's just go ahead and put a text that says A. Okay, I'm gonna put a spacer underneath it. So that spacer should shove everything up to the top of the V stack. Okay. And from there, let me just make sure everything's going good with the stream. Good. Can you increase the size of the text on Xcode? Yeah, I can. Let me know if that's better. Okay. That should be a little bit better. So now I'm going to go to this, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna save it and I'm gonna run it. And we're gonna do a lot of saving and running just because I wanna make sure everything is looking good as we're working. Okay, sure enough, here we have the A, here we have the B, and this excess red here is just kinda letting us know it's, it's the background um, behind, behind this list and spacer. Okay, um, and then inside of this list, what I really wanna do is I want to add a, we're gonna end up doing sections okay so we're gonna touch on a bunch of different um, things we can use you know different uh, elements so inside of a list we can put sections and what are the point of sections well what you'll see is that we can give them headers and it may it gives a really nice clean UI for navigating uh, different sections within a list so you'll see in just a moment so I'm gonna we'll call this one clocks and inside of here we'll just put text a and then underneath here, I'll maybe put another section, okay? In this section, um, we'll give it a header of more. Okay, sorry about that, it's not a string. That should be a text, it's expecting a view, not a string, okay? And inside of that, we can actually go ahead and complete this area, this one right here, this section. We're gonna put something static for now, okay? Action. And inside of there, we're putting a button that is just going to be actually be an H stack. And we'll put image text. The text will say settings. And the image will use an SF symbol, uh, which if you don't know what SF symbols are, I'm just going to give you a 30 second spiel, not even 30 seconds. If you go and search for SF symbols, assuming you've already downloaded them, you can download them if you haven't yet. But if you have, you can just search for your SF symbols, and these are automatically included uh, icons that are, you know, given to us by Apple. So I can just refer reference any of these. I can come here and say gear. So if I want to use this gear right here, I can just say system name gear. That means go search the SF symbol database for an image uh, that corresponds to gear. So that would be this specific one. It's this literal thing, and I can say save. And now, if I run it, I should have. A list on the left hand side sure enough here's our settings button okay and this brings us to the first thing I want to change so I don't like this settings button I don't, I don't want any button format at all you notice that on the iPhone there is no default style for a button but on the Mac OS there is it's this uh, it's a rounded rectangle you could say so the first thing we're gonna do I actually found uh, some help online just a little bit of googling helped me out and I'm going to start by creating a new file inside of here. So I'm going to create a new file right here. I want to make sure it's the right part in the hierarchy. It's going to be a standard Swift file. 
I'm gonna call this one styles. And inside of styles, I'm going to import Swift UI. Okay. And I'm going to create a struct and it'll be called plain button style. And it will adhere to button style. Button style is something that's already given to us by Apple. And of course, to adhere, we need to add the proper protocol stubs. So we'll come here and we'll say add protocol stubs. And we actually don't need this one. We'll use a different one. We're going to use func make body. And then we'll say configuration self dot configuration. And we're just saying that we need to spit out some view, which typically references what is known as a view builder. And all we're saying is we need the outcome to be configuration.label. Anyway, that's a whole bunch of jargon that's completely useless. All you need to know is that this gets rid of the default styling for a button inside of Mac OS. So now when I save it and run it, let's see what we get. You should see that we have a button with, <clears throat> uh, oh, of course we didn't add it yet. So we'll go here and we'll just say, oh, by the way, that button that we had, we'll need to say it's button style. And that would be plain button style. Boom. Okay, and let's see what we got. You should see that there is absolutely no styling. Let's go right over here. There it is, no styling. It's just it's just there like that, okay? And while I click on it, nothing happens, but that's because we didn't actually put an action inside of that button. So now we set up our more area, and the next thing I'm gonna set up is the clocks. So I'm gonna take a, a quick second and diverge from UI development and move over to the actual logic development. Now, the key to making a nice app is making sure that you don't do patchwork. You wanna think ahead, and our thinking ahead is that we wanna create some classes that we're gonna use over and over.